Hi, this is World Series champion Aubrey Huff, and you're listening to Out of Left Field on the Grueling Truth Network. Hey, guys, welcome back to Out of Left Field, brought to you by the Grueling Truth Network. We are sponsored by MyBookie.ag. Go to thegruelingtruth.net and click on the MyBookie link. You can get up to a $1,000 signing bonus when you sign up for MyBookie.ag. Just say you heard about it on thegruelingtruth.net. Man, a lot of stuff to get to today. Opening day finally here. It needs to be a national holiday. That is something that is well beyond Chris's and my pay grade. So we'll go ahead and put the ball in play on to the first show after heaven has decided to go ahead and grace itself upon us for the next seven months. So, man, first thing we're going to get to, the A's have acquired Kendris Morales from the Toronto Blue Jays. This is an interesting one for me. Um, So the uh, Blue Jays get an additional million dollars in international bonus availability. Uh, But at the same time, Toronto is covering Ten million of the twelve million remaining on Morales's contract. So, all in all, you know, really, you're you're paying what three million bucks if you're the Oakland A's for Kendrys Morales. You add a nice little bit of bat. Yeah, you have a little bit of injury uh, on the backside because Matt Olson uh, is injured, the first baseman. So Morales is actually going to play first base for Oakland uh, as we have. Uh, well, while Olsen recovers from the, the uh, Hammett excision procedure, which just does not sound really enjoyable. But n- not a bad bit of pop to get back when one of your big young guys is down for, down for a little bit. Yeah, I think this is probably a good move for, for the A's, especially considering that they do need uh, someone to fill in there at, at first base. Uh, they're sending some – some guys back down, you know, in order to, to make room for him. But um, I think that this is kind of the kind of guy, despite being 35 years old, I think this is kind of the kind of guy that you, you know, you can get him and, and not have to pay a whole lot for him. Sure. You're going to give up some, some, uh, some uh, international monies, but with the Toronto Blue Jays paying the majority of the salary, I think that this is probably, an excellent move for, for the Oakland Athletics. Franklin Barreto is going to move back down. He's going to get demoted in order to make room for, for Kendris Morales. Um, I don't really see that being uh, permanent because he was their top hitter in the Cactus League. Right. And I think that he he hits too well to stay in in Triple A for very long, but there's really not a spot for him at second base right now. So we'll see. I think the interesting thing will be to see how Jerks and Profar handles his time in Oakland. Um, I mean, this is a big year for him, and with Profar, I believe playing short, but obviously you can kind of flip those guys if you need to. That might make room for him if Profar begins to struggle. The good thing for the A's is Profar also had. Uh, 24 games at first base last year in Texas. Uh, you know, Morales, for the most part, is kind of like a kind of a poor man's David Ortiz, right? He has only played 30 games at first in the last two years combined. So very similar to, to Ortiz, who, you know, would get a fresh first baseman's mitt every year, and then you just give it away to charity because he's never going to use it. But after a rough 2017, Morales came back with a 249 uh, batting average, had – a 331 on base, which is, I mean, that's what you like for a guy who's a switch hitting, kind of a power hitting guy. That's the name you think of with 21 home runs. Yet able to have uh, an on base almost 90 points higher than his batting average and slugged 439. You know, I mean, he's sitting, what, we're talking close to, uh, you know, a 775 or 800 OPS. That's not bad for a guy that they're going to go ahead and get and not have uh, to pay a whole lot of money. So, uh, it's still early, early in the season, we know, but that gives Oakland at least a pretty good look coming into it, and we'll see if they kind of match what our expectations are going to be in the fact that, that I think you and I both think that based on the overall weakness of the American League as a entire league right now, that they're likely going to be uh, the wild card favorite again, at least in probably the second wild card behind either the Red Sox or the Yankees. Yeah, I agree. Um, 
although, you know, we'll talk about this later, but it's super early, but uh, I do like what I'm seeing out of, out of Seattle. So. Uh, Seattle's interesting. I mean, even Tampa Bay, right. We'll talk about opening day here in a minute, but uh, coming into today, obviously it, it's Sunday. We record usually about a day before you guys get it. So we have time to edit everything and get it right for you. But uh, coming into today, the, the Astros have lost back-to-back games to the Rays. Uh, and, you know, really Justin Verlander put in a, a nice performance for his opening day start, but it was more kind of highlighted by Blake Snell's struggles. Had Snell pitched better, we could be looking at an early, uh, you know, 3 hole for the Astros. So, again, you said early, but we'll talk about it. Something that it is not too early for would be – us once again saying that you Darvish is done. Darvish yes. pulled yesterday after two and two thirds innings of what some people have described as pitching, but uh, pulled after two and two thirds innings, gave up three earned runs on two hits. To be fair, I long... think I think only the Cubs are calling it pitching, and that's just damage control. Yeah, walk walk seven strikes out four which I mean hey you know right now he has a 13 and a half strikeouts per nine average right now except that his strikeout to walk ratio is 0.57 and he's averaging 23 and a half walks per nine Uh, leaves the game with a 10.13 ERA again it's early we know but man this was a absolutely horrific deal that the Cubs pulled off I, I think that we could we can safely say, at least I feel comfortable saying it. It is, in my opinion, one of the, uh, one of the, the, the the worst decision moments in the career of Theo Epstein. And I get that he is the president of baseball operations, not the GM, but he's going to sign off on a lot of these deals anyway. And I think this is one of the the lowest points in his uh, baseball career that we've seen with, 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 I mean, the highlights that he has had and, bringing titles to Boston, bringing titles to Chicago. But, dude, Darvish is there until 2023 and is yeah, owed and $81 million, and I don't see anything about an opt-out clause or a buyout. I don't either. I didn't see anything, any club options in that contract. I didn't see any uh, any real way for the Cubs to walk away from this without paying you, Darvish, all this money. And I don't know – that he's even going to be able to finish this contract. I mean, if if he does play the remaining years until 2023, in what role? Because not as a starter, not 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 performing like this. And it's. I mean, if you can bring over a really good young Japanese kid, you could pay him 81 million bucks to be a translator. I think that's excessive since you could probably hire a translator for less than. I mean, I agree because I think Darvish years. still uses a translator. So it kind of is, you know, doesn't make a lot of sense, but I mean, I'm just looking for something. That he if you could find a, if you could find a really good young Japanese kid that you can control for a little while, um, you can save that money by only having one translator. So I tell you that one more time, you hear, we got a little bit of a, of a breakup there and I, I didn't pick you up on that tail end. I said, if you can, if you can find a really young, Japanese kid then you can bring uh and bring him over and you can control him for a little while at the rookie salaries then uh you can save money by only having to use one translator very true you know man this is just you know I I told you that I thought that the signing of Darvish would be would be the the better of the two options between him and Arietta a couple of years ago when we were waiting to see which of those two were going to find homes and, I mean, Arietta is still not the same Cy Young winner he was in Chicago, which is fine. I mean, you expect to see uh, you know, some difference. But, obviously, I was way the heck off with this. I, I mean, at the end of this, you're looking at a guy who is uh, – he's 12 games over 500 for his career, 57 and 45, and has an ERA of 3.5. Now, granted, I get that that, that ERA is – inflated a bit because of the 10 that's sitting there from opening day but either way I mean you know at this point he just is what he is and 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 that's what we're gonna have to go ahead and and just deal with he he just he just is 
you know, he, he is not the 16 and nine all star, the 13 and nine all star that he was in 2013. Um, right. You know, it, it's, it's just not, it's just not impressive. You know, he's made four all star teams and most of them were probably just because of the name, right? He made, made the all star team in 2014. He was 10 and seven. Made the All Star team in 2017. That was right before he went to LA. He was six and nine with the Rangers. Finished that year at ten and twelve, and of course had one of the most epic meltdowns in World Series history. So, uh, the question I think really we have to look at now is, what is it going to take for the Cubs to be able to cut their losses and get somebody in who can actually be effective? Because I told you when we did our breakdowns on the NL Central a couple of weeks ago my biggest concern with putting the Cubs uh, in the lead of that division was that rotation because Hamels has the ability to still be good. Lester has the ability to still be good, but you got to see what Chatwood is. Can Quintana actually come back to White Sox form? And you have Darvish, which you could almost pencil in as a loss every time he's out. Right. And, and when you're talking about on after a guy's first start, or seeing the guy's first start about being able to pencil him in as a loss every five days, that that hurts you in the long run. Right. And, and uh, you know, I, I mean, I, I'd love to, I'd love to go ahead and say that, that, well, there's definitely, you know, there, there, there's definitely possibility here for him to, you know, to, to, to make something happen or, or you know, he can come back from this, but I mean, he, has, he, he was never the same after he had uh, Tommy John surgery back in 2015. I mean, it was just – it was never – we began to see, obviously, the, the decline. Uh, you know, with, with that 10-6 and six year, he still makes the, he still makes the uh, all-star team, but it's not nearly as effective as he had been. Right. And he has not been the same piece since that. Well, and – Yes, last year was short for him. I mean, he went down after, what, a month and a half. Uh, he went down in May to that elbow injury. Right. But uh, let's not pretend like he was doing well before that. Exactly. Um, he, he didn't really have a whole lot of, uh, of time with the Cubs where he was playing well. And um, I think between the Tommy John – decline and the elbow injury last year I think it's it's about time to just say that that you Darvish has seen his best years uh yeah I mean I yeah I think that was uh we've established that in the last year or two we've been we've been doing the show um at this point now it's you know it's just a matter of how much money can you try and recoup And, and I think if you are Theo Epstein what you're hoping for is he finally says, you know what, I can't handle it, I'm going to retire. And you can find a way out of, you know, maybe maybe 50 or $60 million of the money that's still owed him because he's going to go ahead and retire and just get him out the door that way. Um, and if he's not willing to do that and he wants to just go ahead and take what he can, you know, maybe you have an insurance policy where, hey, the guy is just, you know, he's unable to perform at all and we can't get him out there. Even if we want to get him out there, he's not going. But I think with – you know, with that that kind of Chinese, cause I believe isn't he? He's Chinese, right? Even though we say he's a Japanese pitcher, I believe he was of Chinese descent, if I remember correctly. Um, but either way, you know, you're going to have that kind of um, that kind of mentality, like Ichiro, where he's going to want to play as long as he can, except that he's not playing at the same level that Ichiro was capable of until he was in his mid forties. Um. Yeah, he's just not um he's not going to have any longevity that I can I, I think his longevity is is over now. I mean, he's 32. This is not exactly the time in someone's life when you expect them to make major turnarounds. Uh if he was 29, then we might be might be able to say, "Hey, you know, Maybe you Darvish is going to come back from this, but yeah, I think you're right. I think that um, he is definitely going to to not live up to some of the longevity we've seen from other Japanese stars, which is interesting because we've had that conversation about the long road 
it is to get into Major League Baseball from the Japanese leagues. And we've talked about, is this, you know, is this something that, that needs to be re-looked at or needs to be reevaluated because it's, it's given these guys short MLB careers. But of course, that, uh, that has a lot to do with, with, the, with the Japanese leagues and not wanting to get their players poached early and right. things like that. I mean, and that is, you said that, that that's a, an agreement between the MPB and MLB. But, I mean, hell, we've seen Tanaka kind of up and down. And, and I mean, he had the opening day start for the Yankees and, and pitched decently well. He's not great. You know, he's not the same kind of gyro ball guy we saw when he came out, but he is still an effective piece, you know, what, four or five, six years on into his MLB uh, career. Also, um, you Darvish is is half Japanese Japanese and half Iranian. Uh, his, okay. His his name is Farid U Darvish Fiat Darvish Fiat. Um, yeah, middle uh, first name Farid, not you. Uh, goes by you. Played in the Japanese league as you, but first name Farid. Huh. Did not know that. I didn't either until I looked it up because I also thought he was of Chinese descent or was half Chinese. Yeah, I, I swear I had heard that. I thought I had heard that somewhere, which is really, that's interesting. Well, you know, one thing um, I, can t- I can tell you this. I can tell you that Justin Upton's first name is Justin. Yes. I can and also tell you his first name is Melvin. <laughs> which he also tried to hide for a while. He did. But, but I can also tell you this, that the Los Angeles Angels use turf in their outfield how do we know that because justin upton has turf turf toe which i from what i'm seeing here uh as i as i look through a lot of the the description of what happened he ran into uh this is during i think the final uh the final spring training game this past sunday so a week ago today he, he they went, actually don't they actually have grass in their outfield. He hit the padding or the cement he, below the padding. He, yeah, yeah, yeah. He hits the cement and jammed his toe or jammed his foot and thus yeah. now has, has turf toe, has which turf toe. is not good. No, and especially when you're talking about they're saying he's gonna miss eight to twelve weeks with this turf toe injury or this jammed foot. And that could mean uh, you know, if, if things don't go according to plan, we might only see a little bit of Justin Upton prior to the break. And that's bad for the Angels. Yeah, and, and I mentioned this to you when I heard this, and, and it does. It, it really is a a dark cloud hanging over the Angels season when, when my, my first thought is, well, maybe without him, they'll be far enough out by the time that Otani gets gets released that they won't overuse him and risk hurting him, you know, unintentionally. And and you basically, you know, told me what a sad state that it has to be when the first statement that you and I come, you know, that I come up with is well, hopefully they're far enough out by that point that we won't have to worry about it. Right. And this goes back to my argument against Trout signing that $426.5 million deal. I mean, the one good thing about that deal is it doesn't start for two years, right? They don't, that doesn't hit their payroll for another couple of years. So they could theoretically go out and pick up some sort of fill in for Justin Upton, maybe help themselves out. But the season started now. So uh, the number of guys who don't have homes is dwindled. And the number of teams willing to look to, to move guys around, they're looking to get rid of long-term stuff. And, and the Angels can't afford long-term stuff. Yeah. And, and I mean, and having Upton there is not, uh, I mean, you know, I mean, he's, he's in the second year, a five-year deal, $106 million contract that he signed a couple of years ago. But he's 31. He had 30 homers last year, had 85 runs driven in an 808 OPS. So he's a guy who, for the most part, stays healthy. And what we've seen from him is he 
he tends to play a lot better in warm climates, so he's in the right place to play. So he, well, you know, we've seen that he tends to play a lot better in the Los Angeles area. Uh, well, yeah, I, I mean, didn't you know? It wasn't the best when he. I mean, he he was probably at his peak when he was in Arizona. Um, but again, a, a warm, you know, a warm climate struggled. You know, played well in Atlanta, but that's when Atlanta paid so many. You know, overpaid a lot of players trying to win something, and then ended up really hamstringing their ball club for the next five or six years. And then he struggled uh, a good chunk in Detroit early on in the year because it was still pretty frigid there. I mean, at the end of this, you know, you and I both know we, we have done uh, we've done plenty. And hell, even, you know, and it's ironic, but, I mean, you can almost feel the same kind of discomfort if you wear a pair of brand-new boots, right? Um, but basically he has sprained the joint of his – uh, of his big toe, which just, ow, I mean, you, right. know, you know, your big toe is, uh, you know, it, it, I mean, that's kind of your balancing point and yeah. when that thing, you know, when that's not working, I mean, you're not going anywhere. Well, it's also not, your, not anywhere fast. It's yeah. It's also your push off point, right? I mean, right. when you're running, that's you, the, the weights coming off your foot at the big toe. Right. So, um, you know, that's painful. Um, he he played really well in San Diego as well, if I recall. I'm trying to look it up right now. He played a year in San Diego that I think he had a really good year. Yeah, 26 home runs, hit 251, 336 on base, um, decent OPS, OPS 790. So he's at the same numbers, similar numbers to where he is was in L.A. last year um, in about the same number of games, 150 games. In fact, uh, this is really going to be – um, this is really going to be the first time that he misses out on being in 140 plus games, uh, 145 right. last year. But before that it was 149 was his lowest until you go all the way back to 2010, uh, in so. his first four years in the league. So yeah, he's the guy so, yeah, I, every day type of guy. And, and that's going to hurt the angels not to have a guy like that. Yeah. He did, definitely is a, is a, an important piece that angels team. And it's going to hurt to not see him until late May or early June. Guys, when we come back, we're going to talk about opening day. Finally here, opening day starter gets a nice chunk of change with a contract extension, then goes out and pitches what is only described as, well, probably another Cy Young type performance to start off the 2019 season. Stick with us. Be right back after this word from mybookie.ag. Hi, I'm Mike Goodpasser from the Grueling Crew Sports Network, and we're here with one simple message. If you're watching the games, it's time to start making money. The Grueling Truth has partnered with MyBookie.ag, an industry-leading sportsbook website, who reminds you that where you bet is just as important as who you're betting on. And that's why the Grueling Truth urges you to check out MyBookie.ag. In addition to the usual thousands of odds, money lines, proposition bets, and futures offered on MyBookie.ag daily, they also have live in-game betting and a mobile site that makes wagering on the go easier than ever. So join now and mybookie.ag will give you a 50% bonus on the first deposit for up to $3,000 in extra playing money. Just enter promo code TGT50. That's TGT50 to take advantage of this offer. Visit MyBookie, courtesy of the Grueling Truth Network, and enjoy winning today. That's mybookie.ag. You play, you win, you get paid. And we're back here on Out of Left Field. Be sure to follow us on social media, Out of Left Field, with Chris and Graham on our Facebook page and at OO Left Field on Twitter. You also be sure to follow the Grueling Truth Network at Grueling Truth on Twitter and the Grueling Truth Network on Facebook. So we mentioned this at the tail end of the last segment going into the break, and we'll come back into it. Uh, guys, apologize for the technical difficulties that we're having. Uh, both of our internet connections have just kind of been odd the last couple of days. It's even tougher when you live up in the mountains in an Arizona. Uh, it's kind of we're saying an Arizona Valley, and you're up in the mountains. But um, you know, I know with you, man, it's one of those things that if someone someone hits something or cuts something, all of a sudden you are in trouble. Right. Well, there's only one fiber optic line coming into the valley, so if it gets chunked we lose everything we lose internet tv net satellite everything we even lose cell service um so when when we have a little bit of issue we have a lot of issues so we've yeah. had some problems with our upload speeds last couple of weeks 
Um, download speeds are good, but you know that doesn't help when you're trying to broadcast. If you're uploading, right. you're terrible. So if you're if you're hearing him cut out a little bit, uh, I, I I pick it up as well, guys. So I try to kind of have him repeat it if we can. Um, but but we are both aware of it, so we apologize for it. Just not much that we can do uh, at the moment. So at top of the break, we talked about a opening day pitcher having a Cy Young type performance and getting a what is at least a Cy Young type deal. And that's Jacob Degrom, the Cy Young winner last year from the National League. Uh, he picks up a very nice bit uh, of contract extension here. He is going to make one hundred and thirty-seven and a half million dollars, fifty-two point five million in deferred money all without interest, which is at least helpful for them. So um, the deferred money gets pushed back 15 years, meaning that, again, we will have Jacob deGrom Day until the year 2035. Ah. What? So, what Bobby with- Bonilla, so Bobby Bonilla Day will turn into deGrom Day. What is with the Mets and, and, and their deferred money deals? I don't understand it. Dude, it works. I mean, hell, you're, you know, I mean, we're, we're talking about, you know, what, 80 million, you, you pay this guy now 80 million bucks instead of having to pay him, uh, you know, instead of pay him 137 up front, he'll make 12 million next year, 13 and a half in 2021, 15 million in 2022, 12 in 23, and a $15 million deferral on the 2024 option if it's picked up. <laughs> it's it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. You know, we're going to be uh, 15 years from now. We're going to talk about uh, the Mets paying Jacob Degrom his annual what million and some some odd. Right. It uh, he'll be collecting from them until he's 50 or 60. Yeah. So that so they say the present day valuation of the contract is 108.9 million uh, with the way that they're going to go ahead and then break down everything else and again i think the key here is that there's no interest being uh bearing you know interest being bared on this uh right. on this contract so you know what what it is is what it is he's not going to get extra as as you know the market rises or goes down right and he uh he restructures his arbitration deal because that effectively stays the same he still gets the same 17 million now it's just a 10 million dollar sign on bonus and 7 million dollars in salary um his final arbitration season is locked in at 23 million. Um, he'll make 33 and a half in the next two seasons, 30 and a half in 2023. Right. Um, but again, a lot of that pushed back. The option. I mean, value, I'm sorry, go ahead. The option year value is 32, uh, 32 and a half. I think that that is going to be a big deal because I think 15 million of that is also deferred or 12 million of that is also deferred. That's the 2024 uh, option, right? Right. Yeah. 15 yeah, million f- of that. F- 15 million is deferred. Yep. Um, which, so this is really the, f- another, another indicate, another uh, example of a team uh, of the Mets specifically using this deferred money to set themselves up for the future and to set a player up for the future. I mean, realistically, what Jacob deGrom got here, as he may not have gotten $426.5 million to live on for the rest of his life, but he did set himself up for a comfortable retirement pay. I mean, dude, he just won Publisher's Clearinghouse. Exactly. So I was going to make that same connection, but I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know if you would understand what I meant. <laughs> That's exactly what he did. He just won the publisher's clearing house, right? Hey, guy's look, gonna get look, five look. grand a week for life. <laughs> I I am I hang on, did math. I am thirty two years old and married. Trust me, being able to make five K a week for the rest of my life is a connection I have surely put together already <laughs> at this point. So don't worry about that. Uh, I think this is a good deal for both the player and the team, um, especially if the Mets can can pay him uh, twelve million a year and defer. Yeah, I'm surprised more year. teams don't try this. And maybe it's the fact of, I mean, again, you know, does this all of a sudden 
do we, you know, do we step back and go, well, damn, Brody Van Wagner might be kind of smart after all. Uh, I mean, maybe. I mean, I, I get, some, I get. There's more to this, but I mean, you know, you're looking at this made from some the side good of deals, man. He really well, yeah. made some good deals. I mean, this is really, this is really a GM agent type of deal, right? Hey, look, I want, I want my guy to get paid, but at the same time, Jake, we can go ahead and pay you for, you know. 10, 15 years, well, not 15 years, but we can pay you probably seven, 10 years after you retire. Oh, okay. And then imagine if this happens again. Well, do you want to pick up a little bit more deferred money? <laughs> okay. Yeah, you know, exactly. And all of a sudden that deferral just keeps going. I mean, that, I don't, to me, it just, I'm surprised that more ball clubs don't take this kind of approach. Um, Especially when, uh, you know, I, I, I guess the, the the difference here is is it has to be a, it has to be you know a guy you know is going to stick around for a while. But you know the Stanton deal, um, the uh, the Albert Pujols deal from a while back. I mean, those are the kind of guys that you would have expected to go. You know what? Um, yeah, probably could have done that. Right. Exactly. You know? The Harper I mean, deal, the, the Trout deal. I mean, the, the really, Trout deal is what? the Trout deal is definitely one where you're talking yeah. how, close to half a billion dollars. Yeah, I'd be happy if making that kind him, of money until I'm sixty. If you can pay him a quarter billion now, right, two hundred fifty million now, and the rest when he's retired, right, and pay I'd that out over three hundred million now. Yeah, but and hell, pay that out I, over the course of twenty or thirty years. Yeah. You're, you're spending you're you're spending the same amount of money, but you're deferring it out, and you're not paying interest on that money. That money's earning. Yeah, I, I mean, if, if I can owe you two hundred million over the course of, you know, what twenty twenty five years, I'll I'll take that. That yeah. works, you know. Yeah. I mean, I I don't foresee the league, you know, folding at that point. And I mean, you you know, now you're you're set until you're about well, you're getting paid until you're what, I mean, 60, 65. And at that point, Mike, once you finish that, you can collect social security. So it works out great. I mean, I mean, you know, you're right there. Then you can start getting that little bitty check and, you know, you'll be able to live like the rest of us never will understand. Well, and, and, and not for nothing, <laughs> not for nothing. The guy's, the guy's paying quite a bit in more into social security than, than you and I ever will. Uh, yeah. He's still paying the same percentage, only it's, the same percentage of a whole lot more money. Uh, so his social security checks probably gonna be a little bit bigger than yours anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's just, thanks bud. <laughs> You're welcome. I, I, I was just, I'm just trying to help. I hear you. I, hey, I mean, he, you know, he's, he's doing what he can, but that brings us into opening day, which thank God is finally here because if I think all of us are like, all right, look, we, we, we've done it. We've watched spring training. Let's just let's just get to it, and we're finally here. I had a chance to go to opening day for the second year in a row. I had a chance to go see the Tampa Bay Rays play, which if you ever have a chance to go there, um, just understand the stadium sucks, and they are a pain in the ass to get parked. Aside from that, as I called and complained to you about when you were in class, um, it's, it's great when they don't let you know ahead of time that they're a cash-free stadium now. And hardly uh, any parking any parking area takes cash. And the first one I saw that did wanted to pay forty bucks to park. What forty dollars <laughs> to park? That would have cost more than my tickets combined with tax. Yeah, that's a bit uh, well ridiculous to be honest. <laughs> you know, I was just like, that's okay. So you know, they said this. They said it was sold out. It wasn't near sold out. And so the seats we had. We're further down the right field line, but it was in the middle of almost everybody. And I'm looking about two sections over, and it's empty. Okay, let's be honest. Is is there a big difference in sitting in section 217 and section 215? No, no, there's really there's really not. Uh, it's the same. And and now I can just spread out, and I can happily drop all my peanut holes on the ground and not worry about someone you know having an issue with it because. Let's be honest, man. There is no better sound than standing up and hearing the crunch of eaten salt in the shell peanut holes under your feet. Fair. Absolutely fair. 
I think peanuts are the one thing that I uh, have to have at a yeah. ball game. Um, yep, I in absolutely. Fact, in fact, I can't. I don't think I could attend a baseball game without uh, two things. One 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 of which is more important than the other, and a third one that I can consider almost optional. I can go to a baseball baseball game and not have beer. That's an optional. Sure. Right. Um, I don't because like most of them don't baseball. serve draft anymore, and the and the the tall tall cans. Yeah, the tall cans. Taste, yeah. It tastes weird. Well, it gives them all that time to get warm too. Yeah. Um, yeah. I can I can go to a baseball game, but I would prefer not to go to a baseball game without seats. Um, seats are a big deal to me. I think seats yeah, are an intricate I, part of baseball. They are, but it's tough when you know. I mean, but you don't want to spit it in someone's hat. But well, you, that's why you just drop it into the ground, with, just like a like a peanut shell. But I yeah. won't go watch a baseball game without peanuts. Yeah. Nope. Will not. That's just. Yeah, I, I mean, that's, and I'm a little saddened I, by the fact that um, I mean, don't get me wrong, I love roasted salt, salted shell, shell in shell peanuts. Uh huh. But I'm a little sad that baseball, baseball stadiums don't serve boiled peanuts anymore. That's that's true. I, I don't I don't know if I have seen those in a while. Uh, I will tell you that that, that my new favorite, uh, which actually we didn't have surprisingly, uh, but I do like a uh, a good ballpark hot dog with some nacho cheese on it. Yeah, good ballpark dog with nacho cheese is, is definitely a good optional thing. Uh, one of the great things about that, though, is at, at the Diamondback Stadium, you can actually there's – a, there's a seating area up there that's called the all-you-can-eat seating area. Uh-huh. So you buy a ticket. It's like 30 bucks, and you sit in that section. It's in the 200s up in the second, second story, but it's still decent seats down the third baseline. Um, but that entire section, you just go up to their concession stand and hot dogs, nachos, sodas, all that, all you can eat, all game. Really? Yeah, yeah. So you want to get a ballpark dog with nacho cheese on it in the first inning, and then you want another one in the third inning, you're not going to pay for that. Yeah, you've already paid. And after you have two of them, you've already paid for your ticket. So no, I was once, gonna... you, once you've had two of them, you're, you're going to be paying for a while. Yeah. <laughs> and I will say that that is uh, uh, out by – I think it was it was right center field out close to where the big the big screen is at, at, at Tropicana Field. There was a fantastic uh, barbecue spot. Uh, I mean, just really, really good food. Didn't get a chance to go out there. I, I didn't head out that way this past game, but it was really good. But anyway, so we did not plan on talking about food, but I think that was a very, a very worthwhile thing to discuss. Let us know what your favorite ballpark food is. Message us. Leave it in the comments on the show. Out of left field, Kristen Graham on Facebook and at OO left field on Twitter, that could be a, uh, a fun conversation, you know, maybe one of those, uh, you know, which of these four or five foods, uh, you know, could you, could you most let go, but, uh, th- that'd be a, a fun one to discuss. But anyway, as we get into opening day, it was a, uh, it was a day that, that kind of, I think some of it met us with, okay, yeah, we expected that. And some of it went, wait, what? So on my way in, first thing my dad texts me is Robinson Cano hits a homer in his first step bat. Maybe we were wrong. <laughs> I was like, well, I don't, I don't think so. But I mean, it doesn't help my argument when he over <laughs> homers in his first at bat, and that became really the uh, really the game winning home run in the first as the Nationals were shut out. I believe we had five shutouts uh, on opening day, but the Nationals were shut out two nothing by the Mets. The Yankees win 7-2 over the Orioles. No surprise there. The Brewers, Lorenzo Cain robbing. I mean, it just a beautiful time robbery catch in center field to, to secure a win for the Brewers and the Phillies 10-4 win over the East rival Atlanta Braves to start off our opening day conversation. Well, and you love to see you love to see Lorenzo Cain back out there making an immediate impact doing sort of what Lorenzo Cain does. Um, we talked about this when, when he left, when he left the, uh, the Royals, we talked about this possibly being one of the bigger moves that Milwaukee was going to make last year. Um, of course, then again, they, they did go out and get Yelich as well. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Who ended up being the, uh, the league MVP. But um, 
but I but love again, to see okay. but again, one's a free agent signing and one's a trade. So I mean, you right. were actually yeah. able to woo uh, Kane into your organization before you managed to bring Yelich in via trade. Right, and and they went out and they went after Lorenzo Cain and they got him. And it's nice to see Lorenzo Cain still, you know, making immediate impact. He really, he really was. I don't know if I want to say he won that game for him, but definitely the that that home run robbery stopped that game from going into extras. Yeah, he definitely you know secured uh, haters' first win or first save rather. Which, by the way, I watched the end of the the Cardinals Brewers game last night. And yeah, Josh Hader went ahead and said, "Strike out, strike out, strike out, nine pitches, all fastballs." Oof, he, he's good. He's yeah. he he tis solid, as we as as we say nowhere around here. But he tis solid. Um, the, the Blue Jays Tigers go two nothing, but that game went scoreless all the way to the tenth inning. Right. I mean, I love a pitcher's duel as much as the next person. But when you're the Blue Jays and the Tigers and you ain't got nobody to watch do anything, and it's probably going to be you know, two of the, the, the lesser teams in Major League Baseball, and they can't manage to score anything until the 10th. I mean, the Blue, the Blue Jays got two hit. The Tigers had two runs on four hits. That's just one of those moments that makes you go, oh, Lord. Well, um, so opening day, opening day saw – um, a lot of interesting things, I think. Uh, one of the interesting things is is seeing the Mets beat the Nationals two nothing. Yeah, I don't think we, I don't think we really expected expected that. Um, but also interesting I'll, to watch. Well, say I also <laughs> saw a a report that Major League Baseball has hired uh, a a vice president of offensive production. I didn't know that you could hire a thirteen fourteen year old kid as a vice president, but apparently Big Al has now been hired by Major League Baseball, and it showed on opening day when there were 48 dangers. Yeah, 48 dangers. Well, not just 48 dingers, but um, the Los Angeles Dodgers set a Major League Baseball record by putting eight of those over the wall against Zach Granke and the Arizona Diamondbacks which is not what you want to see from Zach Greinke at all. Um, yeah, didn't did I think Pollock had two, Jock Peterson had two, if I remember correctly. Um, I, I mean, it, I mean, it was that was nuts. <laughs> I was uh, like, let's what, see what just happened. So Jock Peterson had two, Enrique Hernandez had two. That's right, Kike. Austin, so I was thinking of Kike. Austin Barnes, Cody Bellinger, Corey Seager. Max Muncy, ouch! It makes you happy to see Seager knock one uh, over yes. the fence for sure. Yeah. And and I will say, and, as you mentioned, Austin Barnes. What do I see yesterday? But I I managed to see uh, I managed to see a, a ball in the dirt that uh, Yasmani Grandal for Milwaukee tries to put a glove on to the blocking, and what does it do? Gets away from him, kicks out way to his left, and you know runner moves up. It's just. The Dodgers made a, made a really good decision to let him go. Right. And um, on the other side of the ball, Zach Greinke's carrying around his 17.18 ERA after his first start. <laughs> uh, but might, I, might, might need a wheelbarrow for that one. Now, going back to something that you said during our previews. Um, now, I said there's, there's no way uh, that this Dodgers offense isn't the most potent in the division. It absolutely is. Absolutely is. In in three games uh, so far this season, they've put up almost 50 runs. So... Um, not a bad differential. No. No. They... Definitely not. Uh, so, when you're talking about a team that's got a heavy, potent offense like that, it still lets you take a step back and look at some things that are a little bit worrisome right now uh we have a dodgers that for the first time in eight years didn't have clayton kershaw starting on opening day had clayton kershaw been starting on opening on this opening day as the clayton kershaw we all know and love i think this would have been a 12 to 1 game 
Exactly. It ended up 12 to five. And the, the Diamondbacks have really little to no offensive pop. And they got Jake Lamb. Uh, they got, uh, what is it, Para? Is that his name? Uh, uh, yeah, Albert, Francisco Albert Para. Albert Jr. Oh, yeah, Para, I'm sorry, yeah. Um, they got Almora. I mean, they got a little bit, but nothing like they had in past years. And they still managed to put five on this Dodgers team. I'm actually not sure that I – I agree with you on the fact that we've been told told to one because Hyunjin Ryu, I mean, a 1.5 ERA. Um, I mean, that's, you know, it, it was, it was, they only had two runs through the first eight innings and then the, the, the Dodgers bullpen gives up three in the ninth. So, uh, you know, I, I, it, I'm not necessarily sure that, that this is necessarily a, a starting pitching issue in this game, in this game. Whereas maybe some of the others that we've seen, we could begin to raise our eyebrow. Uh, I would have to look at at uh, Kershaw's opening day starts and his record as an opening day pitcher, but I seem to think I or I seem to feel like he goes deeper uh, than most opening day guys. Uh, he's probably, I would say he's probably about seven innings, which I believe is about how far guys like Verlander went. I believe that, uh, if I remember correctly, that that's how, how far Ryu went was through the seventh. Um, it is not how far Chris Sale <laughs> went in his opening day start, as you mentioned, the World Series champions got just shellacked on the West Coast. Well, they did get – they did get whacked around a little bit. Um, but what do, what do we, what do we want to say about Chris Sale right now? Because part of me wants to say, well, um, coming from a guy who was the best pitcher in the American league last year to not having, a, not having a good outing, let's put it that way against the Seattle Mariners is a little worrisome for me. I mean, yeah, I think this is one of those things where, you know, this is the moment when, as a veteran player, you can really make a statement to your team. And I think that, that you know, Sale walks in there the next day and says, you know what, guys, here's the stat sheet from yesterday. Screw it and just take some scissors and cuts it up. And, you know, we just move on to the next one. <laughs> what what i mean that isn't that good leadership i, I what's so i don't get the the hilarity there you're so bad yeah i i feel like you try to shoehorn that into every chris sale conversation we have oh yes i would do nothing of the kind i mean it's not like look you know it's not like i'm saying that i that i think that chris sale wears shirts from untuckit.com all right i'm just saying that i think that in moments like that when you have a bad outing, you have to kind of just, you know, you, you cut it up, you, you burn it, you bury it, you put it behind you, and you move on. <laughs> okay, fair enough, fair enough. Yeah. I, um, but Chris Sale wasn't the only one to have a bad day on opening day. Um, there was a lot of bad days on opening day. Bryce Harper had a bad day on opening day. <laughs> oh, it took two at-bats where he got booed for back-to-back strikeouts. It was uh, – <laughs> It was funny because if you look at what it says on NBC, um, uh, excuse me, on CBS, uh, they talk about, well, he, uh, he, he got a standing ovation when he was announced, got a standing ovation when he took his place in right field, got a standing ovation when he stepped up to the plate. After his second strikeout of the day, <laughs> the Philly fans became Philly fans again, and they booed him. <laughs> no, he he hit his first his first home run uh, yesterday. It, like I said, it was a wall scraper, but wall scrapers count nonetheless. Whether or not you're scraping the the center field wall, or in his case, the wall of the third deck, but but he got <laughs> but he got a uh, he got a curtain call for that, which is nice. It's nice of them to go, hey hey, we so glad you actually did something you're supposed to do for the money we paid you. Uh, and we'll see how that how that continues. But you, know, you mentioned this kind of ingest of, of talking standings. You know, 
talking about standings right now is kind of like doing uh, power rankings at the end of every week, right? And, and, and now at the end of at the end of April, we can do that. I, you know, we can't really do it at the end of March because, well, that's today. And <laughs> who the hell knows what's going on now? We will get into top five, bottom three starting next week as we did last year. And that's going to be, uh, you know, a, a lot of fun. And, and we'll see what happens. But, I mean, you know, I heard something the other day when I was on, uh, on Survive in Advance, the daily podcast you can find on the Grueling Truth Network, the gruelingtruth.net. And, and I actually shared – the one that I was a part of onto our Facebook page out of left field with Chris and Graham. Um, but I can't, I can't recall who it was, but um, he said, you know, the, the, that every team loses a third, of, loses a third of their games, wins a third of their games. And the last third is up for grabs. And I kind of stopped and I was like, huh? Well, yeah. Because the Orioles won about 40 games, and that's just under about a third of their games. So, you know, for the most part, it's a pretty accurate statement. So it's going to take a little while to see what we have. You know, we'll, you know, we'll see what happens with the injury bug. Obviously, we mentioned Upton. Um, Daniel Murphy is out with a fractured finger. That's going to hurt Colorado. Um, at, at the moment, the Nationals are at the possibility, I believe, of being – uh, uh, of being swept. The Phillies are potentially sweeping the Atlanta Braves right now. But, I mean, Scherzer had, you know, it was the first, I think it was one of the, the first times in history that both opening day starters, DeGrom and Scherzer, both had double digit strikeouts for their respective teams and they went when they faced head to head. Hasn't happened since 1970. Okay. So, yeah. So, um, so the first time in, his, in history of me being alive. Right, so for you, it's uh, last, for you, it's not the first time, but close. Last time it happened, it was Dave McNally of the Orioles and Sam McDowell of the Indians. So you can you can take that however you want. I don't know who those two people are. Me either, and and I'm just going to lay out some happiness uh, for you. Uh, Evan Longoria did come out with an injury um, from the Giants game, but the Giants are not going to get swept by the Padres. So I just wanted to to wish you congratulations. Nope, nope. They did win. They did win last night. I did watch the tail end of that game. Uh, it was good to see them not lose. Um, <laughs> or, uh, in the words of of the the main character from one of my new favorite books, The Martian, I'm really looking forward to not dying. Oh, I thought you were gonna say it was good to see them not giant, but yeah, close enough. I guess that's about the same. Uh, I mean, and I tell you one thing, Charlie Morton looked really good. Um, for, for the for the Rays in in game two, uh, right now no. the Rays have have a two one series lead over uh, over the Astros. Astros Astros put up two runs on Morton in his first start. That was it. Um, Blake Snell got really smacked around to give up five earned runs in six innings. Three of them of were guys, long though, balls that I saw. A couple of guys had bad days. Chris Sale had a bad day. Uh, Zach Greinke had a bad day. But let's be fair. Blake we saw Chris Sale have, have several bad days last right. year and we were still talking about him at the end of the year being a Cy Young candidate. I mean, it's just, uh, just, it's just going to happen. But a couple guys had really good days. Um, you just mentioned, uh, obviously, DeGrom and Scherzer both had good days. The Scherzer didn't have as good a day as DeGrom did. Um, but Jordan Zimmerman, former Nationals pitcher who's now a Detroit Tiger, um, went six and two-thirds perfect and ended up going seven one-hit innings uh, giving up no runs on his opening day, uh, which is good. I mean, uh, it's good to see the the Detroit Tigers have a have a pitcher that's, you know, good. <laughs> well, I mean, it, you know, I mean, mind you, this is you know, he is the owner of a no no, uh, three right, hitter right. on on I think the last game of the, the last game of the year. Or at least it was his last start. But I think it was the last game of the year three or four years ago, it was right before, the, it was before we started the show. So it would have been about three or four years ago. Right, it was um, the first, uh, first no-hitter in Nationals history. Yeah, but, you know, I mean, there are a lot of things that he was supposed to be that, that did not uh, manifest themselves. But hopefully this is kind of one of those moments where that begins to happen, which would be, which would really be great for him. But again, top five, bottom three will come next week. We will obviously give you power rankings as we get into the month of June. We're not going to, we're not going to go yeah. all the way through, you know, we're not yeah. going to go. I mean, if we want to, you know, be, you know, be real, we could do it the last week of May, but 
you know, power rankings, this is a sport where you need to rank every month because everything changes and, you know, what kind of winning streak are guys going to go on? I mean, we could have said that the, the White Sox were the best team in baseball three years ago after the first month. And, and at the end of the, at the end of the year, when we first started the show, they were a dumpster fire. So right. this is going to be, uh, you know, it's going to be a fun year. There's going to be some, you know, I, I'm interested to see how some of the, the rule changes really will work. There won't be much difference, but next year, um, that's really going to, to change things. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how the strategy of, of the game, hopefully, comes back in and how the roster changes will, will affect these guys. Yeah, I'm looking forward to, to seeing how strategy comes back into games, especially in the American League, where uh, even though they have the designated hitter and the strategy is somewhat less than it is in the National League, um, they still have that righty-lefty uh, specialist. So right. I'm, I'm interested in seeing what happens when those guys can't just come out for one hitter. So uh, lastly, before we go, I want to say two things. Uh, happy birthday to your daughter. She turns nine and she's excited. I'm not sure why. I mean, it's only nine. I mean, it's not ten. Nine. You know, I mean, like, you, like, and you mentioned it, right? She could lose a finger and still give her age. So, yeah. I mean, is it really that impressive? No, no not you at know. all. But happy birthday to her. She's going to, we're going to go see some Captain Marvel and we're going to go to Buffalo Wild Wings, which is her choice for uh, dinner this year. It's a little bit of a little bit of a derailment from her normal choice for dinner, which is sushi. I was kind of looking forward to sushi, but okay, I guess we're going to get B-dubs. I mean, at the end of it, you know, she's really, I mean, it is kind of her because you can either get beer or you can get sake. So she's looking out for you at the end. She is she, definitely your daughter. Yes. Um, and also, I will say uh, as well, on Tuesday, it is my uh, nephew's birthday. So happy birthday uh, to Brady. Brady will be 11. So he is now two hands plus an extra digit. So looks like we're gonna have to uh, we're gonna buy him a uh, a sandal, just one, just one. He can show a toe, but don't have to show. You know, I mean, he can wear a shoe and a sandal and, and be good. Or and I'm just spitballing here. Hashtag make Brady nine again. I, I mean, I I suppose, but you know, I, I mean, we've already been through a uh, been through somebody suing. Or, 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 you know, yeah, I believe he sued to, to make his age younger because he wanted to put a younger age on a dating profile. And because he identified as a younger course. person, right? Yeah. So, um, so we're not going to hashtag that. We're, 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 <laughs> we're, we're, we're truly not going to hashtag that. But happy birthday uh, to Brady as well. So, uh, and, and I, need, I need one more help here. All right. I have okay. a game tomorrow. I, I have three games to umpire this week i'm umpiring monday wednesday and friday i have two games to broadcast those again will be put on the show because well i really want people to watch and you know like use your feedback and the support i'll be broadcasting with space coast daily on tuesday and thursday we're really looking forward to that and next monday we should be getting uh the avant-garde academy as part one of our teams we're going to watch there the number four number 18 in uh in the state of florida for baseball so looking forward to that but had the plate tomorrow, which means obviously it's my my pregame or uh, my plate meeting to run, and I you know you got to find some reason to go ahead and mess with everybody. Sure. So my thought, because it's not the least crazy thing I can do, is to tell the captains and everybody that that the uh, that uh, Florida High School has now decided that jewelry is legal and all players can wear their bracelets and earrings and stuff, and it's not a big deal. And then as soon as they get excited, just say, yeah, April Fool's. Wow. That's a good one. I like okay. it. I, like I, it. It, it. I've heard others do it. I'm like, I kind of like that because it doesn't get, you know, it's not, it's not like too, too kind of in your face. So I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and uh, I think we're going to go on that one. Yeah. I mean, don't do anything really crazy. Like, you know, ring somebody up and then say April Fool's. Yeah. No, I, I, <laughs> I've wanted, I've wanted to like, like on the ones that are, I mean, really, just uh, like the like, like the egregious one, where you're like, okay, yeah, we all we all know that we're kidding, but that just I don't, I don't picture going over happily. Right, so yeah. I was like, yeah, I, that to me was kind of the the happiest way to do it. Well, so. that I think is gonna get. Uh, you'll probably get laughs. I mean, not a lot of laughs, but you'll probably get some laughs. 
I mean, it only has to be, you know. I mean, really, if the coaches get a kick out of it, that, that's better for me because if the players don't, I mean, you know, whatever. Yeah, who cares? <laughs> but anyway, so busy week for me. I know a busy week for you as you guys are nearing uh, exam week. You have state testing, which is oh so fun to proctor and be a part of. So yes. you get to enjoy that. Uh, yeah, all week next. Uh, well, no, Monday and Tuesday next week, and then all week the following week. Hey, that means that means nothing for you to grade. So I mean, I'm just saying, look at the look at the upside here. Oh no 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 no. We proctor state tests for one class, but not. A, I mean, so like Monday, for example, I have history first, third, and fifth period. I don't see my English students at all on Monday. It's block schedule, and then ah. Tuesday I proctor two exams. So I still have to teach. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, enjoy. Oh, Enjoy. Yeah. I'll get right on that. I'll get right on. <laughs> so, again, guys, thanks for hanging out with us again. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at OO Left Field and like us and follow us on Facebook out of Left Field, Chris and Graham. And be sure to follow the GruelingTruth.net at GruelingTruth and go to mybookie.ag for your free $1,000 sign up bonus. Basically, they will give you up to 50% of whatever you put in. So, uh, put in 1000 bucks, you get 500 put in two grand. You get a thousand, anything above two grand, you still get the max of that thousand dollar sign up bonus. It's a great way to go ahead and get involved in sports betting. If you're something you're wanting to do, mybookie.ag, a great way to go. Just tell them you heard about it on the gruelingtruth.net. For all of us here, for Chris, I'm Graham. Thanks for hanging out, guys. Enjoy the rest of opening week. Catch you next week here on Out of Left Field. And we're out. Yeah, you're, you're, audio broke up pretty rough a couple times.